The year is 1987, the golden age of video games, where Pac-Man owned the arcades and Nintendo ruled the home console market. It was at this time, a small company named Capcom would make their debut in the home market with one of the most iconic series of all time, Mega Man. So, when I was a little kid, like seven or something, I found out about this game called Mega Man 2, supposedly the best one in the franchise. It, it was pretty good. I mean, I liked platformers. When anyone thinks Nintendo platformer, they obviously think Mario, but like, I didn't realize that Mega Man was made by like different people, but like, it just kind of had this like, sort of appeal. Back then, like, games are just games, like, you didn't really think about stuff going on behind the scenes, you didn't realize that they were like actual people making these games. Mega Man was conceived and drawn by Akira Kitamura, loosely being based off popular manga character Astro Boy. With a team led by Keiji and Afune, they created Rockman, known worldwide as Mega Man, and was released in 1987 to widespread appeal. The basic formula was that the titular hero would take on six bosses, later up to eight in the sequel, and would use their abilities in order to complete the rest of the game. The formula was applied to six other games, all with varying degrees of success. However, by the sixth game, sales had decreased significantly. This prompted the team to abandon the successful NES, which by 1993 was far past obsolete. This birthed the creation of Mega Man X. A long and arduous development cycle began in 1992 for the new hardware, and was released in December of 1993 to critical and commercial success. The X series fared about as well as the classic series, and both continued well into the late 90s, with the fifth game being released in 2000. This was meant to be the conclusion to the series, according to Anafane. Without Anafane's consent, however, Capcom began work on Mega Man X6, after the successful sales of X5. This led to complications with Capcom and Anafane, while he was beginning to work on the next series of Mega Man games, Mega Man Zero. Capcom ignoring Anafane's wishes regarding the Mega Man series, and essentially milking the franchise for all that it was worth, was far from unprecedented. Shu Takumi and his small team had developed and released three titles in a series known as Turnabout Trial in Japan and Ace Attorney internationally in 2001, 2002, and 2004. As the series director, Takumi saw the trilogy as complete and feared that any further installments would lead to the series becoming a ghost of its former self. With the surprising popularity of Ace Attorney worldwide, Capcom was adamant that Takumi had to create a fourth game which Anafane was actually executive producer on. This new game, Apollo Justice, was Takumi's last involvement with the main Ace Attorney series and paved the way for Capcom to produce a number of spin-offs and sequels. It seemed that Takumi's fear of the series never ending had come true. The development of X6 led to complications with the Mega Man Zero series. Mega Man Zero was released on the Game Boy Advance to critical acclaim, but only to moderate commercial success in 2002. The Mega Man Zero series saw yearly releases until 2005, with the release of the series' conclusion, Mega Man Zero 4. With each game, Inti creates, the developer, further developed new systems and gameplay elements to diversify the series. However, something became very apparent to Capcom during this time. Mega Man Zero and its successor, Mega Man ZX, were not selling nearly as well. Too much was changing. Old fans didn't like the changes, and the series failed to attract any new players, as 2D platformers were obsolete at the current gaming environment. However, despite the many changes in terms of gameplay, the basic formula was long outdated. The Mega Man formula had not significantly changed in over 20 years. I think there was like a big shift in like direction between like the older games and the newer ones because the older ones were focused on like 
making a really coherent game in terms of gameplay, well, the new ones were trying to make like a whole atmospheric story and stuff. And I think Mega Man Zero controls a lot more flu with a lot more fluidity. It just focuses on being a lot more quick rather than being like trying to be like really minute and trying to be really focused on execution and like solving puzzles like the first few games. I think Capcom has always been a company that tries to keep like doing what's safe for as long as that they can do it. But I think in Afane particularly, uh, he had like a lot more plans and he wanted to make, he wanted to like continue his story, I guess. In October of 2010, Inafune announced that he was formally leaving Capcom and founded his own company, Comcept. In September of 2013, Comcept created a Kickstarter for an action platforming game that would be a spiritual successor to the classic Mega Man series. Far exceeding its original goal of $900,000, Mighty No. 9 gained nearly $4 million in funding. It looked as though after years of waiting, Mega Man fans would receive a true successor. Mighty No. 9 was a beacon of hope in a time where everything Mega Man related was being cancelled as the franchise was no longer profitable. Inafune was going to bring the spirit of Mega Man back. After what seemed like an eternity, Keiji Inafune's spiritual successor to the classic Mega Man series has finally arrived and it's got people stirring for better or worse. It misses the entire point of the Mega Man gameplay style. Mighty Number no. 9 just doesn't get Mega Man. I think the best word you could use to describe this game as an entirety is just unpolished. For a game that's meant to bear the legacy of a classic series, Mighty No. 9 barely succeeds. It may rouse excitement from time to time, but by and large, it lacks a pervading sense of artistry, both in its level design and presentation. It's been a long road since PAX 2013, as Mighty No. 9 went from a convention spotlight stealer to one of the highest profile video game crowdfunding disasters in history. After the critical failure of Mighty Number no. 9, fans across the internet were hesitant to support any Kickstarter or anything related to Anafune. The future of Mega Man and its successors is uncertain at the moment. The franchise is currently the only seeing releases and repackaging of classics. Mega Man was once one of the most recognizable video game series in its prime. Perhaps the only thing keeping it from absolute obscurity is the impact it's had on other developers, and perhaps that impact is enough. Mega Man's influence upon gaming can be seen even today in games like Shovel Knight and Azura Striker Gunvolt, keeping the genre of 2D platformers alive. So although Mega Man may have meant unceremonious end by the hands of corporate meddling and a changing industry, it lives on as one of the most important video games of all time. <laughs>